In this video, we're going to see how to resize a photo to a specific size and keep it proportional. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 11 for this video, but you can get the same results with other versions of Elements. First of all, let me say that, in general, when you enlarge a photo in Photoshop Elements, you risk losing quality to your photo. I'm not going to take the time to explain why that is in this video, but I just want to make you aware of the fact. It has to do with the resolution of your photo. You don't have to worry about losing image quality when you make a photo smaller. In this tutorial, I'm going to resize an 11 by 17 inch photo down to 8 by 10 inches, and we're not going to crop away any part of the photo. In an earlier video, I showed a quick technique to crop a photo from 11 by 17 to 8 by 10, but for that technique, you have to be willing to delete part of the photo. So, I have this 11 by 17 photo open in the Expert Edit mode in Photoshop Elements. Let's go up to the Image menu and choose Resize Image Size. And the Image Size dialog box appears. First, let's focus on the section that's kind of in the center of the box that's called Document Size. There's three fields in this section. We have Width, Height, and Resolution. Basically, it's telling us that we have an 11 by 17 photo at a resolution of 72 ppi. We said we wanted to change our photo to 8 by 10, so it should be pretty easy to type 8 and 10 in the width and height fields, and then click OK to make the change. So let's do that. First, double click on the number in the width field, and that will highlight it so we can change it. And then type in 8. Notice that when we typed 8 into the width field, the height field changed to 12.364. Well, that's okay because we can change that to 10 the same way that we changed the width field. So I'll double click on the height field and then type 10. But now the width field changed to 6.471. Why is this happening and what can we do to stop it? We can get a hint by looking over at the right of the width and height fields. There we see a connecting line and a link icon. What that indicates is that the two dimensions are connected to each other proportionately. So if we change the size of one dimension, the other dimension will automatically change to whatever size it needs to be to maintain the original proportions of the photo. Think of it this way. If we wanted to change the size of our photo from 11 by 17 to 5.5 by 8.5, it would be easy because we're changing both the width and the height by the same percentage, 50%. But because we're going from 11 by 17 to 8 by 10, it's a different percentage for each dimension. So, how can we get around this? In the Image Size dialog box, Look at the options right below the Document Size section. See the middle one that says Constrain Proportions? That's the culprit that's forcing the dimensions to stay proportional. Let's uncheck that option and see what happens. When I unchecked it, the connecting line and the link icon disappeared. Now we can change the width and height independently. So I'll change the width to 8 and the height was still at 10 from the last time, and it worked. It didn't change this time, so now we just click OK. But look at our photo. It's now at the size we want it, 8 by 10, but it's distorted. You can see our handsome subject appears to be scrunched. He's shorter and wider than he was before we resized the photo. So is there any acceptable solution? Well, sort of. What we can do to size it down to 8 by 10 and still keep the original proportions is to add extra space to the photo. So I'm going to undo the resizing by pressing Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on a PC and go back to the Image Size dialog box. And I'm going to make sure the box is checked next to the constrained proportions by clicking on it. Now we need to see if we should add the extra space to the left and right sides or to the top and bottom of the photo. We don't really get to choose that. The photo itself dictates where that's going to be added. And the image size box will help us figure that out. First, let's change our width to 8. Now look at what size the height changed to and make a mental note if it's bigger or smaller than what we need. 
In this case, we want the height to be 10, so it's bigger than what we want. Remember I said about the only solution is to add extra space to our photo to get it to the size we want? Well, the width is already at 8, where we want it, so we don't want to add any space to the width. And the height is now bigger than what we want, so we can't add more space to that either. So let's go ahead and change the height to what we want, which is 10. Now I'll look at what size the width changed to, and remember we want to see a smaller size than our target size, which is 8 by 10. Well, the height is now where we want it, but the width is only 6.471, which is smaller than 8. So now we have a smaller photo than we want, but we can add extra space to the width to make it our target size of 8. That might sound kind of complicated, but if you just kind of work with that for a while and think about it, I think it'll make sense to you. Click OK to resize the photo to 6.471 by 10. Now let's add the extra space. Go up to the Image menu and choose Resize, and this time click on Canvas Size. The Canvas Size dialog box appears. Unless you change it, the canvas size is always the same size as the image size. And you can see that the canvas size is the same as our photo size at 6.472 by 10. In this dialog box, you can do a couple different things. Of course, you can change your canvas size. Let's do that to what we want right now. We want it 8 by 10, so I'll just type 8 into the width field. But you can also pick the color that you want the extra space that you're adding to be. You choose that down at the bottom by clicking on this drop-down menu. You can choose it to be filled with the foreground color, the background color, and the foreground background color are the two big squares at the bottom of the toolbox. You can see right now that the foreground color, which is the top square, is black, and the background color is white. From the drop-down menu, you can also choose white, black, gray, or other. If I click on other, the color picker appears, where I can choose any color I want, or if I move my cursor over my photo, it changes into an eyedropper. And if I click with the eyedropper, it will load whatever color the eyedropper is over at the time that I click, and it will fill the extra space with that color. So say I want this orange that's on this trailer right here. I just place my eyedropper over that orange color and click once. And it loads that color, as you can see in the color picker. Then click OK to close the color picker, and click OK again to close the canvas size box. And now with the extra space that we added, the photo is 8 by 10, and the extra space that was added is filled with orange. But I think usually people choose black or white. I just wanted to show you what options you had. Notice that it put half of the added space on either side of the photo. If you want, you can add all of the extra space to one side or the other. Let me show you how to do that real quick. First, I'm going to undo the extra space we just added by pressing Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on a PC. Then open the Canvas dialog box again, and enter 8 into the width. Now let's say we want all the extra space to be added to the left side of the photo. To do that, we need to use this square with all the arrows shooting out of it down here. The way this works is that you click on the arrow that is on the opposite side of the square from where you want to add the space. So the square kind of represents the sides of, the, of our photo. We want to add all of the space over on the left side, so I'm going to click on the arrow that's on the right side of the square and you can see at the bottom that the color is still set to that orange that we picked up earlier. Now I'll click OK and all the space is added to the left side. And that's how you can resize a photo and still maintain the same proportions. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.